And how do I find you on Facebook? Because that's what we're here to talk about today. Yeah, uh, so on Facebook, you, if you, you can just search me on, uh, under this big search box, G-R-A-N-T, Turk, T-U-R-C-K, and I should pop up, pop right up. Okay. I wanted to talk to you today, Grant, about um, what you did specifically on uh, Facebook, because you've just graduated from Pepperdine University in public relations, right? Correct, right. yeah. And you're looking for a PR job in Hollywood, here in Los Angeles. So tell me, um, why did you use Facebook? How did this come about? What have the results been? Uh, I, I did, the first thing I did is I, I picked up a copy of your book, um, which I, I found out about from uh, uh, one day I was watching NBC News and they had uh, some recruitment, re recruitment guy on there talking about the, what you should do or whatever. He says the number one thing you should, number one thing you should do is pick up this book. Um, I'll have to find that video. <laughs> by David Perry. And um, a J. Conrad Levinson uh, called Guerrilla Marketing uh, uh, for Job Hunters 2.0. And said, so pick that book up. Uh, I read through it and looked, was looking for good ideas. And one of those ideas was in, in there was, was talking about fa Facebook advertising. And it's just talked about how, despite you know our recommendation to, to, to do Facebook advertising and how, how powerful it is at making oneself stand out, um, the percentage of people that will actually take us up on, on, on what we say is very, 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 very minuscule. Um, and so I decided, what the heck, I'll, I'll, I'll try this, because they say it's not gonna cost much and, and it's very easy, so I, that's why I did. I, I, did. I, I took you guys up on what you said on your book and it's turned out to so be great. So how, how did it work out? Did you get interviews out of it? I think the, the greatest thing that I got out of it was exposure and publicity for myself, which is, I think is the number one thing, at least uh, I, th I think in, in not just in, just in, in Los Angeles or in, in Hollywood, but uh, 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 the number one key at the world at large is in this, in this job market is, is to make oneself stand out from the crowd. And so with, with Facebook advertising, you can really tar uh, you target your ads to, s to specifically those people um, that, that you want to reach directly in a, in a very kind of uh, uh, creative uh, uh, manner that not, not many people uh, uh, seem to take advantage of. And so, uh, you know, everybody wants to know what were the results? Did you actually get any interviews? Yeah, I've been, I've actually I've had a, probably in the, in, in the past like four or five weeks, I've had about one interview a week. Okay, and are, did you, have you get any offers or are the ongoing conversations? Uh, several ongoing conversations and I've had uh, one offer. Okay, and obviously you didn't take it because we're sitting here talking, right? Yes. That's no. an assumption. Um, so with the Facebook uh, targeting, um, is there anything else you're doing in conjunction or is there anything else you think you should be doing or somebody else that's watching should be doing in conjunction with, with Facebook? Yeah, definitely. There's a, always more one can do um, uh, in the, in the self-promotion game. And I think that I think that's really the key uh, to getting a job these days is you have to self-promote yourself because if, if you're not self-promoting yourself, nobody else is going to, going to be probably. And so uh, I, I, I finally am just getting my blog started. So okay. I, I just have my blog uh, up, which is, is going to be it's TurkishDelights.com. Turkish Delights? Okay. Yes, they had to play on that. So it'll be T U R C K uh, Delights.com, playing off of my, or T U R C K I S H Delights.com, playing off of my last name um, and, uh, and the unique branding of That's cool. Turkish Delights. And uh, so I'm going to do, a, I'm going to start doing a blog. Uh, I do Twitter, um, I do LinkedIn. Um, Where do you get your most amount of hits? Because I know you're on LinkedIn. What's the difference? Where are you getting the biggest bang for your buck? Is it is it with um, Facebook? Is it with Twitter? Is it with LinkedIn? I think I, with, with 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 Facebook and the, I, I think it really is kind of ultimately about the entire kind of mix. And so I, I think I recommend people to be on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I would say is the top three of investing time in doing each one of those things in, in conjunction in one, one, with one another is is the most important. And, and so how much time is that taking typically out of your day? I would say that to maintain it, I think it can take anywhere in like maybe just two, three hours. Okay, and that's two, three hours casually or two, three hours working at pushing it to the next level? I, I would say two, three hours uh, casually, maybe like one hour hardcore directly, direct focus. Now the, the, the Facebook um, interviews that you got, um, they were at target companies? Yeah. And 
Um, how did they come about? I mean, who did you target? How did they find you? What unfolded? So I, 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 I've done several different types of ads on Facebook. I've done ones that have been just uh, focused on the keyword public relations in Canada and, and the United States. And I've done other that have been uh, focused on just uh, specific companies within the public relations business. So sometimes I was running like maybe 20 different Ads with all, all basically the same relative uh, uh, body copy within the within the ad, but the the headline was different. So it's like I, I would say I went to work at Bite. I went to work at um, uh, GH for Goldman Harris, or I want to work at and just use target those specific company names within the targeting. Um, and so, but and. But with Facebook advertising, you don't have to worry that somebody from uh, Go on Harris is going to see that you're at it. You're running at the same time for uh, bike communications oh, because if you don't work, if you don't have, if you don't have uh, that you worked at um, you know bike communications in your resume and you're now working at the other company, you're never going to see the ad. So when these people, uh, you know, the bike is one that you talked about. What happened at Bite? Um, who did you connect with and how did that interview come about? The, the interview came about from a, a senior account executive um, at the company, uh, saw the ad and wrote me an email directly and actually said to me uh, that he had never responded to an internet ad ever before, um, but saw my ad, was uh, was kind of uniquely intrigued by it and wanted to reach out to me and said, you know, that I see my guy had um, some great, great qualifications and would be could be a great fit for Byte, and I should look at their website. And if I was interested, uh, I should email their their HR person. They gave me their uh, the, the HR person's email address and said that I, and so that I could then say that that person referred me to the referred me to the HR person. And so I looked took a look, took a look at their website. Uh, it seemed like a great place to, to work at in San Francisco. And so I, I then emailed and reached out to the HR person. Um, we then scheduled a, a phone inter phone interview that took place about uh, a week or. Week and a half later, um, and then uh, something about two weeks later, I went up for a physical in-person in interview where I interviewed with uh, four different people from the company. Okay. And that ended that ended an offer that you ended up not taking. Right. So what? But so you went in at the HR level and the senior executive level, and we talk in the book specifically um, about entering, uh, going in at the level of your boss's boss. Is that the level you went in at? Uh, with bike communications, I would say I, I guess probably so because I, I went in at the, the senior account executive was the person who initially reached out to me okay. um, and then and directed me to the HR person um, and I and then and then I and I in the interview I and in, in the interviews I, I landed I interviewed with a with a with the account manager for the team that I would would have would would be working on the uh, senior account executive the account executive and then the, and then the HR person again so I think I, I, I did go in that at that. Higher, higher level. Okay. Now, do you have a top ten list? Because we talk about this in the book. Do you have a top ten list? I, I don't know if I have a, have a top ten, like a full top ten list. I have, a, but I would say I definitely have a top five list. And are they all here in LA? Uh, yes. So, looking at the camera, who yeah. do you want to work for? I want to work for Golan Harris, Rogers and Cowan, um, uh, Bragman, Nyman, Caffarelli, Salters and Digny, or. Uh, Warner Brothers. And why those companies? Because you're involved in other things other than, I mean, you graduated from Pepperdine University with a degree in public relations, but you have other things um, that you work on um, that are really interesting. And how do those, how, how can those um, programs you're working on, the movies you're working on, the books, you, books that you've optioned, um, and what was the one about um, uh, secrets of or that you option for $20? Uh, How to Succeed with Women Without Really Trying by Shepard Mead, which is a book written in 1957. Um, and so I've been, I'm pursuing that as a movie right now. We've just attached some great comedy writers, Dax Shelby and, uh, and um, Robert Stevens, uh, their writing team. And so we're, we're currently going out next week to, to actors. Uh, we have a top list of four people, Robert Downey Jr., Matthew McConaughey, and uh, wow. folks like that to attach one of those names with the, with the pitch that these guys have come up with because the book is non-narrative, non-fiction, and then the plan is to take that, that pitch with the actor and take that to the studios for, for basically financing to write, have the movie written and developed and then turned into a motion picture. Now, I know, so what is your, 
involvement once it becomes an actual, um, what do they call it, a product or? Uh, uh, an actual, uh, once it gets put into, uh, into active development and, mm -hmm. and based in pre-production, which is basically my involvement. I'm a producer, I'll be credited as a producer on the project, but when it comes down to the physical production, that will be basically left up to a, a base, a, another producer that, that does, does basically does the physical like line producing and on the set type stuff. So once that happens, your involvement, uh, other than getting paid for it, right. is, is, is gone. Yes, it's okay. minimal. So tell me then um, how uh, these companies that you mentioned before um, would benefit from hiring you given what else you're doing? I mean, is there is there a crossover? Is it a world? I mean, is is that a, an ecosystem all in itself that you know cross pollinates and stuff? I think one of the things that, that to look at from from what I've done in kind of in in, in the entertainment business is just the the ability that I've had to uniquely position myself and, and get things done that basically very few to no no one else has been able to do. For example, one of the other projects that I'm working on, um, which is John Grisham's The Partner. Um, which, which I'm producing with uh, Lynn Hendy and Robert Chardoff, and people might know Robert Robert's name because he won an Oscar for uh, Rocky. Um, is I, uh, I I I brought the money to the table to to get it done, um, but I did never produced a movie ever before, and I knew one of the big key things was is that that John Grisham. There's a lot of people in this city in in Hollywood that want to make a John Grisham movie, um, but I knew that. Because I never produced a movie before, this that John Grisham would never give me the rights uh, to, to to take his to take his book and make it into a movie. So I knew that it would take would would take a somebody bringing somebody else on the onto the team that uh, to, to, that producing credibility to get that done. So I went and and, and brought uh, Robert Chardoff on board and we and we pursued it together. So how did you get? And this was your family friend. Uh, How did you get Robert? I, I met uh, I met um, Robert Chardoff through Lynn Hendy, who's his pre president of his company, and I met Lynn Hendy, Lynn Hendy from a client a client of mine at the time, uh, a science fiction author that I was working with, um, who introduced me to Lynn Hendy and said, "If there is anybody in this in this business you can trust, it's, it's Lynn." Um, and so I came, I went to Lynn and said, "Hey, I have the money to get this, this project kind of up and running, um, but I don't have the producing credibility. Can we pursue it together, the co-production?" And, and luckily, it turned out that she said yes, and, and so we, we did pursue that uh, uh, together. And, and it's very fortunate because a lot of times, especially in this town in Hollywood, you know, if, if you approach somebody and say, you, uh, "There's this great book that would make a great movie," uh, and they say, "That's awesome, cool, yeah, totally, we'll work together, etc." And then you never hear back from that person again. And then they they take that book and make it into a movie, and you're you're left out on the on the sidewalk. Um, so I can say that I was very fortunate. So where did you learn to do all this? Because uh, you're not from here, right? No, I'm from oh, Cincinnati, Ohio. I kind of pride myself on the fact that I, I have no enter entertainment familial uh, connection. Where did you learn to do all the connections? Just uh, I just by I, by doing. I learned what I I, I learned best uh, by doing. Just uh, and learning from mistakes and and just and just kind of going with the flow. But I I think that that you know that you learn so much more out in the field than you do in the classroom. Interesting. So what, um, you know, Facebook aside and LinkedIn aside, um, let's go back to job hunters. I mean, I, I can see the value in hiring someone like you because you'll just make connections until the deal's done. Um, and, and that is the way things happen, right? Most people don't realize that. Um, what kind of advice um, would you offer job hunters now that, you know, may be struggling. For example, you know, how do you keep yourself motivated? You're here in Hollywood. Um, your family's not here, right? Uh, right, you know, they're back in, they're in Ohio. They're right. back in Ohio. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you, so you've supported yourself through Pepperdine. You graduated. You're now looking for a job. You've got uh, all these different projects on the go. Uh, and, and, you're, and you're looking for a full-time gig uh, as an account manager for one of these large firms. How do you keep yourself motivated? How do you keep yourself going every day? I uh, exercise. That's very, that's very helpful, um, but a bit very basic too. But about release it releases endorphins in, in one's in one's head. But uh, uh, beside that, I, I do a lot of reading, um, and uh, and ultimately you know, it, it may sound kind of dumb, but you just gotta tell yourself that that in the long run it's all gonna work out and it's all gonna be okay. Uh, and just to, to think think positively, you just you just do it. Any any last suggestions? Um, don't be afraid of making mistakes.